everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SimonSysStamp.com. Today I'm going to be using the Snowflake Builder 6x8 stamp set that is included in the January 2020 card kit from Simon. Now when I was designing this stamp set, I was thinking of the end user in mind and I wanted to make it as easy as possible to pair these stamps together to create perfectly layered snowflake images. So you notice that there are dashed lines connecting the different groupings of snowflakes. So that gives you an indication on which ones need to go together. Starting out with the largest snowflake image, and I'm going to stamp this in some teal ink from Simus's stamp. I'm going to do some teal ink now, and then I'll do some embossing on the second layer of the snowflake later. So the first thing I did was I inked that up and then pressed it down onto my white cardstock. Now, even though I did ink it up pretty well, there was one side that didn't really transfer as much. So I stamped it again, and that's the advantage of using a misty stamp tool for this because then you can just stamp in the exact same spot where you did before and that gave me a really good impression. So now I'm going to take some mint ink from Simon and also a blender brush. This is a blender brush from Honey Bee, and I'm going to just take this mint ink and bring it out from the center of the snowflake. I want it to be a really pale green ink. I don't want it to compete too much with the teal ink that I've already stamped. Now it was looking pretty good at this point, but I did want to intensify the center area of that snowflake, so then I did break out that teal ink and just added it very lightly in the center. Now this isn't going to compete too much with the snowflake image. I just wanted to have a little more intensity in the center. Now I'm going to be doing some heat embossing for my second layer of the snowflake. So I want to make sure that this ink that I've already worked with, that, that I've ink blended and stamped is completely dry. So I'm doing a test run to see if this embossing powder is going to stick to it. So I heat set it with my heat tool to dry it as much as possible. I added a powder tool and then I put some heat embossing powder on it and it still was sticking a little bit. So I heat set it again and then when I put the embossing powder on it slides right off. So now I know that it's ready to do some stamping. So I'm going to grab the secondary image from this snowflake pairing and I'm going to line it up right over the top. Now I want you to take note of how the snowflakes look. On the first layer, the larger snowflake, I had the little circular ball on the end of that snowflake segment. It's pointed straight down. And then on this other segment, this other snowflake layer, you also have one segment pointing straight down. So when you look at the stamp set and you go to stamp the snowflakes, I want you to know that when I put the stamp set together, I made sure that the, stamp, the stamps, the snowflakes themselves, stayed in the same orientation. They're not rotated at all whatsoever. So as long as you keep them exactly how they are on the stamp packaging, you should be able to line these up without any problem. So I used some sterling embossing powder from British Monroe for the silver embossing. And then I heat set with my heat tool. For my greeting area, I'm stamping the banner image from the stamp set onto some soft navy cardstock from Simon. I'm putting some sterling embossing powder on that, heat setting it, and once I have that there so I can see the entire image, then I stamped one of the greetings from the stamp set. And these greetings are just curved just slightly so they perfectly fit inside this banner. Sprinkled on some sterling embossing powder. This is the same embossing powder I've been using. And then heat set that with my heat tool. Now, I don't have a die for this one, so I'm using my scissors to fussy cut around this banner. It's a fairly simple shape, so it didn't take long. I thought this large snowflake just lent itself to a circle card perfectly. So I grabbed some nested circle dies from Simon, held that in place with some washi tape, and then ran that through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine. I also used those same dies to prepare a circle card base. So I'm going to break out some soft navy cardstock. This is the same blue cardstock I used for my banner. And I've scored that so that it's folded in half. And then I'm placing my circle die right over this cardstock while it's folded and I'm having it hang off the end of the fold. That's going to preserve the fold and not cut it out so that my card base has a little folded area at the top. So I ran that through my die cutting machine. And then you can see that when I open it up, I have a perfectly shaped circle card. For my stamped piece, I ran my Versamark ink pad along the edges of that circle, and then I dipped the edges into that embossing powder once again. This is going to give sort of a rustic silver edge to the outside of my circle piece. 
After I heat set that, I put this stamped piece on some foam adhesive and then put that directly onto my card base. So this card is actually, I think it's just shy of four and a quarter inches uh, or all around because that's the size of the circle. So it will fit inside a standard envelope. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to create an envelope that goes along with all of these snowflakes. So now I'm going to break out one of the white envelope that's included in the card kit. And I'm going to do some stamping. I've got four different colors of Simus's stamp ink. I have soft navy, blue jay, teal, and mint. And I'm going to be pairing these up in different groupings. I'm starting with blue jay first, and I'm stamping directly onto the white envelope. And it's just hanging off the side of that envelope a little bit. And now when I go to stamp the second layer, I'm going to line it up just perfectly and then I'm going to use soft navy ink. So this is a kind of a lighter blue with a darker blue grouping. I then grabbed the second grouping, which is the green shades, and I started out with mint. And this mint ink is very, very light, so I did end up stamping this snowflake twice. That just gave me a little bit of a better impression, and I could see that green color a little bit more. So after I had that stamped, I then grabbed the teal ink and lined up the other little snowflake image that goes with this one. So I'm gonna ink it up with teal ink and then I'll stamp that down. At this point, I was thinking, well, maybe I want to mix up the colors a little bit. So maybe I'll put a blue with a green shade. So I went back to Blue Jay and I stamped the first image for this snowflake pairing. And then I grabbed that teal color, or I'm sorry, mint. I grabbed mint, lined that up, and then stamped that as well. And like I did with the mint stamping before, I did end up stamping this particular snowflake image twice so that that ink could really darken up and show the best as possible. So I continued stamping with some more snowflake images. For these last few, I went back to my original pairings. So this one is going to be with the color Blue Jay. And then I'm going to, uh, for the second snowflake, I'll be using Soft Navy. So I want to just remind you that when you're lining up these snowflakes, you can um, kind of look at the center of the snowflake. There's some indications that will help you get it lined up just right. You could also do this with an acrylic block, although I don't know how precise it would be. Using a stamp positioning tool like a Misty makes this super, super easy. So I stamped one more little smaller snowflake there at the bottom, and now I have the basic um, design of my envelope done. I added a blue postage stamp in that top corner and then penciled on the recipient's name. I'm using a gel pen to write her, her name and address. And since this does take a little bit of time and all I'm doing is just writing, I'm going to speed it up and turn on a little bit of holiday music for you to enjoy. I'll be back shortly. So that finishes my card and envelope set for today. You can pick up the January 2020 card kit at simusstamp.com. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in another video very soon.